Okay, so welcome uh, everyone. This is the 51st uh, Pain Journal Club of the Mumbai Pain School. And uh, uh, today we are going to discuss an extremely important topic, which is the radiofrequency ablation for the uh, pain after total knee replacement. This is a very, very common uh, condition and uh, we need to be uh, geared up for this. So uh, today we'll have we'll be having a very decorated uh, speaker with us, a very decorated faculty, and uh, uh, I'll introduce them in just a moment. Uh, before we begin, uh, just let us uh, go through an introduction about the pain school. So pain medicine world over has diverse issues and variable standards, uh, because of which there are different learning requirements and different offerings uh, for learning uh, pain medicine across the world. Uh, money and time. These are the conditions, uh, these are the uh, limiting factors uh, which prevent uh, the physicians from learning about this wonderful subject. To overcome this, uh, Mumbai Pain School has been uh, uh, formed uh, by uh, as an effort of Panisha Spine Wellness and Pain Relief Center. And uh, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, very good efforts towards uh, promoting pain education. Uh, so uh, we are using social media like uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, even Twitter to promote pain education. Most of our content is uh, online and uh, on-demand videos are there which are posted on social media. You don't need any login. Uh, we are also providing paid content um, in addition to the free content. Uh, we are conducting the hands-on workshops uh, live, uh, very high quality limited attendee participation workshops. We're very fortunate to have uh, support from expert faculties from all over the world. It is said that the best teachers, they teach from the heart and not for the, from the book. A journal club is nothing, just a club. Uh, the only difference is that here we critically evaluate recent academic literature, which is based on a defined subject uh, of interest. Attendee participation is encouraged. So whatever your uh, inputs, thoughts, experiences, uh, questions uh, are there, please, you are uh, most welcome to ask. If you want to be unmuted, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, so it's a very important. The key in all journal clubs is to be regular. It is tough to be regular. And uh, uh, this is what I request uh, so that your learning is up to date. Also, please note that even Harrison had to do his own journal club in order to critically evaluate uh, recent academic literature. And uh, while conducting, uh, time is of utmost importance. So we will try to stick to the timelines. Healthy skepticism or praise is most welcome. So please uh, shoot back the comments and keep the uh, flow going. Uh, this is a bit about me. Uh, I practice exclusive pain medicine in Mumbai uh, for the last around eight years now. and. Uh, this is about the faculty for today, uh, Dr. Navin Malhotra. He does not need any introduction. So he is the Honorary Secretary of the Indian Society of Anesthesiologists. Uh, he is the Professor in Anesthesiology and in charge of the Pain Management Center at PGI MS Rohtak, Haryana in India. Uh, he's, done, he's, he's got numerous, he's a very decorated, he's, he's a very decorated career. Uh, I've just uh, put down a few things. He's uh, achieved the ISA Bhopal Award for Academic Excellence 2015. He's been uh, the KPR Young Anesthesiologist National Award 20, uh, 2009. He's got numerous publications. Last time when I got his uh, brief CV, this number was 166, presentations 355. I don't think there'll be very few people who exceed this numbers. And uh, he's got his original work on subventotracheal and retromodal intubation as well. But uh, more importantly, he uh, runs one of the most, uh, uh, you, you can say in terms of numbers, the highest, I think uh, I have heard at least uh, personally, he runs a, a pain clinic who's got most numbers in terms of patients. Uh, so a very respected figure. Welcome, sir. I don't know whether he's joined now or not. Let's let me have a look. So I can just see if he's joined. 
not not joined yet so uh, we'll be we'll continue and uh, i'll announce once once i see him okay so uh, let's uh, move on to the presentation for today dr namrata you may start sharing your screen uh, i will introduce you just put on your cv slide yes so i can see your screen uh, just put on your cv slide so i will introduce you yes so uh, dr namrata bhagwat is md anesthesiology she has done her uh, fellowship in pain and she is also a fitness coach at fittr so fitter uh, she is a consultant interventional pain physician at vatsal pain clinic vatsal hospital akola which is in maharashtra uh, she is a, a consultant interventional pain physician at uh, also at sant tukaram hospital in akola so over to you uh, dr namrata and welcome thank you uh, i'm starting my presentation so we have chosen this article safety and efficacy of genicular nerve uh, radio frequency ablation for management of painful total knee replacement the uh, review is a systematic review uh, it was published on november 11 2021 uh, in the journal of curious this was the systematic review was conducted by naga chepalli et al and it was uh, done in institutes in the orthopedics department uh, of these hospitals given uh, in the screen in usa so the introduction is uh, let's let's go through the introduction so uh, the aim was to evaluate and analyze the role of rfa in relieving residual pain after tkr and the aim of the article the systematic review was done to gather all the available literature and critically evaluate the quality of evidence for the uh, genicular nerve rfa to manage chronic residual pain after tkr so most common the post tkr residual pain that is after uh, tkr the pain which is still there so the most common cause of dissatisfaction after tkr is the post tkr residual pain sometimes it is difficult to ascertain any particular pathology for pain when infection aseptic loosening instability malalignment neuroma and other causes are ruled out the conservative management include oral pain medications topical therapy physical therapy acupuncture cryotherapy lifestyle modifications and steroid injections which is like controversial so revising tkr seems a more invasive option for patients whose identifiable cause for post tkr residual pain is unknown minimally invasive modalities like our genicular nerve rfa looks appealing for these subset of patients the methods so the two independent reviewers performed the search on pubmed pubmed using the mesh terms given here then they got a uh, very uh, limited results so they extended the keyword to genicular nerve ablation on pubmed and google scholar and then they got a few more articles they also screened the references of these articles so as not to miss anything the results obtained after the search were reviewed about their inclusion criteria and the inclusion and exclusion criteria were rigorously applied to the articles the inclusion criteria uh, were like all studies in which the genicular nerve rfa was used to manage the residual pain after tkr all were included including the articles which were in english as well as those which could be translated to english the exclusion criteria were four patients who had gn rfa in a knee but without an artificial knee now including like both total and partial uni knee replacement even they were excluded patients with residual post uh, residual pain in tkr but in whom the rfa was applied in the non genicular distribution these were excluded studies that applied rfa before tkr to manage vary of pain these were excluded and the cadaveric studies and review articles were not included in this uh, systematic review now this was the prisma flow chart for selection of the studies after going through many studies identification then screening of the records and the eligibility according to the criteria finally six studies 
were included of 70 patients and three more which they got through references. So as such, nine studies were included. This was the summary of the uh, uh, studies in short. This is also given in the article. This is taken from the article itself. So if we go through the article, we'll find it in a very good way. So one of the studies was an RCT level one evidence. There were four case reports, four case series. Uh, three studies were done in uh, a pooled RF and the remaining were for the conventional RF. This was the quality assessment questionnaire which was taken for the assessment of the case series quality. This was for the uh, National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute criteria for uh, randomized study. So this which C. Sinclair was a randomized control study. And the clini clinical relevance of the studies, they did this to find out uh, if all the all were reporting on the sa same platform in the same way. They did find some discrepancies which we will come uh, to later. So the reporting format, the techniques done, uh, the how the pain was evaluated, the duration of follow-up, the results and discussions. So finally, the result was 70 patients were uh, in these total nine studies, there were 70 patients and some had 14, some had 28. Average age was 68.45 years. The male is to female ratio was one is to six. The pre-operative, uh, pre-operative, that is pre-procedure was or the numerical scale was available in the 59 of 70 patients, that is 84% patients. Average pain score was 7.68 before the procedure. And after procedure, the VAS at three months in these procedures was 4.2. So the mean reduction was by 3.4 points, that is 55% reduction. Pre-op VAS was not available for 11 patients. Cooled RFA studies reported percentage improvement. They did not take the VAS score. So out of the 11 patients who underwent cooled RFA, data was reported only for three patients who had more than 50% improvement in the pain score. Only 16, that is 22% of patients had reported pain score beyond six months. Pain results beyond three months could not be reported as findings were not available uh, for 78% of the patients. The overall improvement was approximately 27.86 points in the WOMAX scores. Uh, so some reported the functional uh, dis uh, uh, disability in the form of WOMAX score. Some reported a SF36 uh, uh, score. So uh, there were improvement, like in all the studies who reported WOMAX score, they uh, the improvement was 27 points and 7 point in the SF36 score. No cases with pulsed RF were included. Now, 84% underwent conventional GNRF, uh, the genital uh, uh, RFA, and 11 patients underwent cool RFA. Out of the 70, 78%, that is 55, underwent fluoroscopy guided RS RFA, and 15 of them received ultrasound guidance for the performance of the procedure. Sufficient points were not available for meaningful comparisons between the two. Pre-procedure blocks information was not available, so no conclusions could be drawn by the pre-op blocks were given in these patients. Duration between the TKR, when it was done, and the RFA. This information was available only for 30 patients. Two authors reported using RFA after six months, while one author reported that RFA was applied in one knee after three years, and in another after five years, after the TKR. Information whether post-procedure steroids to reduce post-procedural pain and discomfort were used was available only for 15 patients, while the rest of the studies did not mention if steroids were used. Only one patient received corticosteroid procedure after the uh, corticosteroid injection after the procedure, whereas 14 did not. Now the discussion. TKR is one of the most performed orthopedic procedures for symptomatic knee OA. After TKR, it might take three to six months for post-surgical pain to resolve. Sometimes the pain improves after a year or so. Any pain lasting longer could be longer than three to six months could be classified post-surgical persistent pain. Prevalence of this PSPP can range from 16 to 39% at six months and 13 to 23% at 12 months. ISP defines chronic pain as pain persisting for three months or longer. Reasons associated with chronic pain after surgery Patients in whom more of these pains were found were poor mental health, history of chronic pain or pain elsewhere in the body, pain catastrophizing, other comorbidities, and high intensity knee pain. Revision surgery performed without a prior proper explanation for pain can have poor outcomes. 
there is a lack of literature on best ways to address this post ikea residual pain systematic review by beswick et al found inadequate evidence on the effectiveness of prediction and management strategies for chronic pain after tikia less invasive but attractive options include intraarticular steroid injections and the genicular nerve rf however some studies claim that intraarticular steroid injection in painful tka is associated with increased infection risk now discussion a short note on rfa RFA was first introduced in 1970 it was first used to treat trigeminal neuralgia and later extended to uh, radiculopathic pain management the cooled rf was introduced in 1996 and the pulsed rf which was a modification of the conventional rf was introduced in 1998 currently three kinds of rfa devices are available conventional rfa cooled rfa and pulsed rf rf needles are ne inserted percutaneously the radio frequency waves are delivered to the target through these needle tips these needles are insulated at the shaft and and have an active tip which may be 8 mm 10 and 12 depending upon the area now this is the uh, radio frequency needle in situ as the radio waves uh, exit the tip the heat is generated through an area of tissue with relatively high resistance that heat coagulates the local area denatures the local protein and results in wallerian degeneration of the surrounding nerves extent of coagulation is determined by the length of the tip conduction medium the needle diameter the temperature used and the duration of rf it has been postulated that rfa preserves the basal lamina of the schwann cells allowing the possibility of nerve regeneration also promotes neuromodulation by inhibition of the excitatory c fibers and there is destruction of the sensory nerve supply which leads to pain relief popularity of gn rfa it uh, it rose after a uh, uh, koi et al gave popularity for o for use of gnrfa in oa knee chronic pain because of the proven safety profile for pain management in knee oa of this particular procedure multiple authors have used rfa to address post surgical pain after tkr rfa can be performed using fluoroscopy or usg guidance usg guidance is they say is better because it it, it helps you see the vessels but it is also uh, the operator dependent dependent complications reported in gnrfa knee osteoarthritis are septic arthritis inferomedial skin burns injury to pes ulcer in tendon bleeding uh, and hematoma these are not yet reported in the post tkr gnrfa cohorts now knee osteoarthritis versus post tkr rf knee oa pain studies were followed for a longer duration so we cannot anticipate similar reduction in pain quantity and duration pain mechanisms could be different in ko uh, the knee osteoarthritis and tkr effective localization of genicular nerves remains unpredictable after correcting the deformity scar tissue may not respond in a similar way as native tissue and that's why we need a lot of studies for this particular procedure in post tkr patients for counseling of the patient it was noted that the first authors of most of the articles were pain and anesthesiology specialists none of these articles were published in mainstream orthopedic journals in the us based on the above observations it is possible that this technique is not popular among orthopedic surgeons it is advised that surgeons or the interventional specialists should be well aware of efficacy of gnrfa as well as complications before either performing or referring these patients so as to set the expectations right conclusion although well established technique for pain management its effectiveness in pain management in post residual pain of tkr is not fully established No properly done studies are there to recommend the technique for population with post residual TKR pain without an obvious cause. Based on the published studies, RFA can cause temporary and partial pain relief, more than 50% that can last for at least three months. After that, follow-up was not available, so it could go beyond that. Limitations which were accepted by these art, uh, authors of the article were lack of high quality studies on this topic. several inconsistencies regarding data presentation outcomes protocols follow up so all could not be compared on the same platform studies were heterogeneous regarding outcome measures duration types of modality and guidance for rfa used so statistical comparison was not possible different functional scores were used in the study making it difficult to compare the outcomes significant variations on how gnrfa was employed the outcomes and complications cannot be generalized to gnrfa no documentation on reduction of the opioids were there in the articles and no mention of any adverse effects of any 
available data could not establish superiority of one technique over the other critical analysis is ex extreme caution has been advised to surgeons in treating post residual pain after tki despite no significant co complication being reported or even reporting of a minor complication no solid recommendation or advice of refraining from doing the procedure conveyed recommended to be done with the own caution no consideration given to the adverse effects of persistent pain on the quality of life mental capacity and morale of the patient if he is not provided any modality of effective pain relief oral uh, oral analgesics and injectable analgesics could cause side effects if given continuously for prolonged periods to tackle this pain and if nothing else is tried 55% reduction in mean vas score in patients post procedure was not considered in conclusion so the take home message is gnrfa should be offered to patients with residual pain post tki where red flags and other causes are ruled out counseling and expectation setting should be done prior to the procedure it can be fluoroscopy guided or usg guided pain relief up to 3 months and more may be achieved this article will help in focusing future research researchers on reporting in a more consistent form thank you great thank you dr amrita for the excellent presentation for the article uh, uh, dr navin sir is here with us so welcome uh, uh, navin sir i have already introduced you although you don't need any introduction uh, is one of the most popular uh, uh, pain physicians across the world i would say so uh, Uh, welcome sir uh, over to you now for uh, the discussion uh, thank you siddhar uh, for such kind words and uh, i must com compliment both siddhar dr siddhar and dr namrata and siddhar for organizing such academic activities regularly almost last uh, one and a half to two years i have been seeing him organizing such good activities of high academic content which are useful for the pain practitioners pain physicians across the country and across the world not only the beginners but also the established one so at times i also just simply log in and see what's happening in the journal club and refresh my knowledge and gain something from the uh, speakers and the discussions which are going on so first of all heartiest congratulations to you siddhar and i will only say god bless you keep on doing good work thank you sir namrata dr namrata uh, you have uh, nicely presented i have been uh, uh, you have been very meticulous about the article which you presented and uh, i have been uh, last you have been preparing this very nicely for over last uh, i can say more than one week and uh, we had some discussions also and uh, it's it's very nicely presented all the aspects heart is strong resolutions to you also Thank coming you. to the coming to the uh, coming to the clinical aspects i must say that this is a very practical problem in our pain clinics we often see such patients coming to us ke doc sahab ab to operation bhi karwa liya ab bhi dard nahi gaya and uh, with due respect to all orthopedician they say ke everything implant is nicely there alignment is good surgery has been done nicely but at the end of the day patient aim is not a good x ray with a good fitted implant imported high quality implant nicely in situ with no infection with no bursitis and everything is good but patient wants improved quality of life which is pain free and it has been seen that genicular nerve block definitely helps uh, i can share my own personal experience also and literature also supports it that genicular nerve block post tkr is a very very good option it is a very safe and effective option the study which dr namrata has quoted is giving pain relief of around 50% or so our experience was 30 to 40% pain relief but that was significant patients were so happy and then the cycle of pain starts reversing with even with 30 to 40% pain relief we initially started doing genicular nerve block with local anesthetic and corticosteroid as an experiment basis somewhere around 2018 at the end of 2018 and we started doing that and subsequently when we found it effective started following it up with to be honest these patients had pain relief for around 6 months a single uh, sitting genicular nerve block uh, 70% patients i won't say 100% and 30 to 40% pain relief with uh, genicular nerve block 
fluoroscope guided. We used to do it fluoroscope guided with local anesthetic and steroid. Once they returned, we started doing conventional RF at that time. And we found that it provides sustained pain relief. And then we started immediately following doing the uh, conventional RF. So it, it is the thing which is going to stay because it is very safe. There are no complications because it is done under image guidance. And you are, uh, the theoretical risk of loss of perception was not seen in our patients. Our experience is limited to around 34 patients or so. And yes, definitely, the, you have to give good amount of local anesthetic while doing the procedure because you're putting needle at three times. The needle is thicker with 10 mm tape. Uh, so you have to go put local anesthetic. And all said and done, practically at, at times, at the end of the procedure, we do put uh, in some patients 10 milligram of trimetrolone at each site. That is also done uh, as a common thing. Though it's uh, if you want to go for RF, you go straight before RF. That should also be beneficial for the patients. So the patients who do not do well, there were other comorbid conditions also, maybe uh, obesity, lack of uh, cordyceps exercises, and other things. So, but getting a result with a block in seventy percent of patients. With around 40% pain relief is very, very rewarding, especially those patients who had undergone uh, TKR. So this block is going to stay, and I'm very sure there will be numerous studies across the country also, uh, which will come up the, in the in near uh, years on the use of uh, radiofrequency GNB for the post-TKR post pain. It is a good thing. If there are any questions, comments, or somebody wants to share his or her own experiences, uh, they're most welcome. As far as complications are concerned, uh, to be honest, practically if done under image guidance, some of our colleagues do it under UHG guidance also. That's also equally good. You, you can block uh, more number of uh, nerves under visualization, the different branches. And But uh, usually, uh, majority of us do it under photoscope guidance, superior medial, inferior medial, and uh, superior lateral group. And uh, image guidance guides us properly. In, in infection and other things, uh, usually we always, always rule out that without before attempting, uh, all these things are not present. And uh, if patient is diabetic or has any other issues, that is under uh, proper control. Uh, great. Uh, so I think uh, right now there are no uh, questions. Dr. Namrata, if you want to ask anything or discuss uh, with sir, so you can start. Uh, meanwhile, there is a question after after you. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, sir, uh, like uh, in your practice, how till how long have you seen the pain? Like after how many days the patient comes uh, with pain? Like just done TKR and the pain is continuously there, or they also come after a pain-free gap, uh, like a small pain-free gap. See, I can tell you initially the patient when he gets operated for one month or one and a half, six weeks. They are under active control of the physiotherapist also. Uh, uh, usually package is interoperative is around five days or so. And then they are attached they, uh, to the physiotherapist who guides them and all the things. And then also they uh, start doing their own activity because they are motivated. Okay, this I've done, I've got done a major surgery done. And at times after one month or so, second knee is also operated. So usually patients in our clinical experience, we don't see it uh, as early as uh, less six months. Because if pain relief is not there, they will go back to the orthopedician, who invariably will give an intraarticular shot of uh, local anesthetic and triamtulon, and thinking that there is some uh, adhesions or fibro, uh, some bursitis or some fibrosis, something, and they'll move it and give them. Then they will, uh, three, four phases will be there. Then the patient starts getting disheartened. When the dose of medication start increasing and uh, this thing. At, at times, majority of the patients which are coming to us, they didn't have pain relief. Well, they tried their best. Uh, surgery, physiotherapy, follow-ups, repeat injections, intraarticular, and then they come, okay, they are disheartened. So very few of them which had some pain relief and pain reoccurred. Majority said that doctor aram nahi pada tha. With due respect to orthopedicians. 
Great. So I think uh, this covers uh, uh, this answers Dr. Namita's question. Now let's uh, uh, take up the question of uh, Dr. Nityanand. So uh, they're asking which is the best for um, grade three and four uh, knee osteoarthritis where intraarticular steroid. Okay. So they are comparing the intraarticular injection before TKR. Means this is not. I think this this question is not pertaining to. Uh, but we can take it. So, sir, what is your experience, grade three or four? Uh, do you go sequentially, like first the intraarticular steroid or PRP, whatever, and then go for the radiofrequency, or you suggest a combination of uh, these things in your practice, sir? Uh, see, grade two, three PRP. Well, I will be honest. Uh, grade two and three, we go for uh, PRP uh, in house. We have got all the facilities uh, where they are done, and uh, for grade four, it's usually. Uh, First, we go for intraarticular injection of the steroid in our clinical practice, and it is invariably combined with GN, uh, genicular nerve. Right. Okay. Suppose patient diabetes is not controlled. At times, patients had uh, pulmonary cock. I still remember one of my colleagues' uh, father who had active cox, and uh, he was on ATT. Uh, then subsequently, uh, he had severe osteoarthritis knee. So we go for straight wave. Uh, GNV uh, uh, with this, so that uh, uh, where there is absolute contraindications for steroid, we don't go for that. Understood. And uh, sir, what relief will you say is a long-lasting relief? What is the definition of like like today? Uh, you know, we have papers which say even eighteen months or and twenty-four months follow-up is there for cool RF. So, what do you say? When will you call this relief as long-term relief? I mean, if there are two things. One is pain relief, and one is long-lasting pain relief. So pain relief, it is there. It will occur immediately, and you will feel uh, the patient will feel good. Long-lasting pain relief, you have to make them understand that it is combination of multiple factors, block, plus precautions and physiotherapy, minimum analgesic. They have to ensure that they don't squat. Mandir jao, puja jao, kahin marji jao. Don't sit. Don't squat. Don't do excessive stair climbing. Do your exercises three times a day. In our clinical practice. Uh, we motivate patients by saying them, doctor, I am busy, bhoot hoon. So we say them, ke, how many times you eat the food? So they will, so they, they get it. They will say we take our meals two times a day. So we said do exercises two times a day. But if you are fasting, then don't do the exercise on that particular day. But uh, follow up with the uh, osteoarthritis knee pain relief after blocks. Uh, at times, patients really are very very religious. And I have seen few patients with more than four years pain relief with single uh, block, but they had this thing that they came early. They had lean body habitus. They were very very religious in doing their exercises. But at the end of the day, even if we have to do three procedure in a year, three sittings in a year for anything, it is good. It is good. But usually, practical experience is steroids give early pain relief. Uh, the first one month. First six weeks are very very good, and uh, but the sustained pain relief is there with either PRP or the GNV. Great. And, and anything anything more than six months is a bonus. So uh, tell them patients here, come to us. Don't worry, we'll take care of you. So I think uh, anything above six months, uh, you know, if it lasts for six six months, it's a good long term uh, result, uh, and you know it can last uh, in subsets. Uh, for a very long period of time also and of course as you mentioned there are multiple factors so we take care of uh, those as well great uh, so thank you sir uh, i think there are no more questions uh, dr namita if you want to ask anything or discuss or comment uh, sir if you want to say your final words before we move ahead. i think namrata must be having some uh, queries so no, we, no, no, uh, she 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 is most welcome i think uh, two things which we have to remember that gone are the days when post TKR, we we used to think that there is nothing. Okay, now even if the definitive most definitive thing has been done, gone are the days. Patients do present. This is a clinical hard fact that patients do present to us after. I she has talked about TKR. I think within a um, couple of months, Siddharth will come up with a general of following post THR also, right? So we are seeing those patients also. Uh, the surgery has been nicely done and cup and head, everything is nicely fitted, but still patient is having pain. So we will uh, discuss some studies later on in a couple of months. 
but yes definitely post tkr pain is a reality patients are so much anguished and depressed and there is writ large anxiety so first setting you have to motivate them to go for the block put confidence in them that this will help you this is there to help you and we will do it in the best possible manner their pain scores initially are very very high they are a bit anxious so good use good amount of local anesthetic so that your that particular procedure uh, is genital nerve block procedure is relatively pain free and if you do it properly under image guidance which we all do under image guidance only you will definitely get results and don't show them the thing that okay you will get tell them 30 to 40 percent pain relief for three to six months whatever he or she gets more i mean we have seen more in female patients in our setup also set the expectations how, right as they have uh, mentioned set the expectations right yes and and, and and more than that is the bonus but definitely it is very very rewarding i can tell you and uh, with this your incidence of gnb prior to tkr will also increase once because patients who have, i can tell you those patients who get pain relief following tkr with this block they will refer other patients to you okay don't get surgery tkr done get a gnb done so that also your incidence of performing gnb in such patients will also increase yeah. but and at the end of the day i can tell you osteoarthritis is a very very complex problem and uh, there is there are so many ifs and buts you have to tailor made the therapy according to each and every individual each and every individual but yes we have to offer them pain relief and i am very happy that pain physicians across the country are offering pain relief to this particular group of patients which is in huge numbers in any individual pain clinic so it was a pleasure interacting with siddharth and his team and namrata and other listeners i hope uh, it was of some use i uh, know so it was very useful and especially your clinical experience uh, with the numbers as well so uh, thank you so much uh, for being here uh, with us today sir uh, with your valuable time i understand your commitments uh, throughout the world um, the ns is always to uh, you know they are vying always for your time but still i want to thank you for always considering uh, my requests uh, to be with us uh, so thank you very much sir it was a pleasure uh, uh, having you here with us so thank you dr namrita also for the excellent presentation and uh, for the discussion so with these words uh, we end uh, the journal club for today uh, the next step is the secret of getting things done is to act so guys uh, join our mailing list uh, check out the whatsapp uh, group join the group for latest updates suggestions comments uh, welcome uh, please mail them to me on mumbaipainschool@gmail.com and just join our upcoming uh, workshop uh, hands on mipsies on 25th 26th and 27th march uh, which will be held here in uh, uh, mumbai and we'll be having uh, an excellent program uh, so i'll be uh, the link is already there uh, with uh, the uh, on our facebook uh, page on insta page on social media uh, if you have any queries on this uh, please uh, get in touch with us so uh, in the end uh, thank you once again and uh, uh, see you soon around until then uh, keep learning bye bye